Steve is married to Rachel Miller Nolt, who just became my pastor. They are the parents of two daughters. Uh, I've asked Steve to talk about how cell phones are impacting the Amish community. The president, uh, Lisa, I was uh, thinking that perhaps with this education from Steve, we'd be better prepared for the ropes of the lumps of over. Have some intelligent questions to ask. At any rate, please join me in welcoming uh, Steve Miller. smartphones or any phone that includes 
Someone else in his uh, position, almost anyone else in his position, would be hard pressed to imagine life without a mobile phone. In fact, uh, last year, 67% of Americans told Pew researchers that they find themselves checking their phones and messages even when they know it hasn't grown or battery. <laughs> the fact that this man would keep uh, at arm's length the advice that most of the rest of us would regard as indispensable might strike some observers as unsurprising because the popular media presents the Amish as uh, shunning all technology, and yet, as uh, again, I assume most of you know, um, uh, the, the, and, and as the example of this technologically sophisticated entrepreneur suggests, Amish descent from uh, the mechanical mainstream is not a straightforward either or proposition. Instead, it reflects a complex pattern of discernment that has produced neither a wholesale flight from technology nor an uh, uncritical equation. New and improved. Um, three principles, uh, three guiding principles that the Amish uh, employ as they uh, think about technology. Um, the importance of limits. A recent um, advertisement uh, for a uh, phone, uh, phone data plan captured the prevailing sentiments uh, in the US today. Quote, I need to upload all of it. I need, no, I have the right to be unlimited. In contrast, Amish faith uh, accepts human limits as an expression of humility and submission and obedience. Limits on technology both reflect and then reinforce this sort of understanding. Asked why his uh, church favors horses, one Amish man I interviewed replied, well, we're more bound by human limits. Man was not designed to work 24 hours a day. When a horse gets tired, you have to stop. You can't just keep going all day like you can with a car or a tractor. Uh, right acceptance of limits means that Amish people are less concerned with maximizing efficiency or productivity. Those things are important to them, but uh, those aren't the only factors. Instead, they focus on technology's social impact. Um, so this helps to explain, for example, uh, why public utility electricity is problematic. Not because electricity is wrong, um, but because it's an unlimited power source. And its presence in every room of the house through announces that the homeowner is ready and waiting to plug in anything, the decision uh, to embrace new devices is a foregone conclusion. Instead, as a consumer community, the Amish believe that discernment comes first and that uh, the power arrangements, whatever they are, will follow later for those things deemed worthwhile. There are a few technologies that all um, Amish folks consider categorically out of bounds. Instead, they focus on uh, how to limit what they see as the primary peril posed by technology, which is its ability to make individuals self-reliant and independent. And so to curb this tendency, the Amish frequently draw a distinction between access and ownership. A store owner might lease a building with electric lights, but not install those lights in their own home. Or a man might hire a non-Amish driver to take him somewhere in the uh, other person's car. By foregoing ownership, they give up some measure of control, um, some measure of independence, and so rather than being a uh, kind of technological hypocrisy, for the Amish, this use ownership, access ownership distinction reveals their deeply consistent pattern of concern about individual autonomy, which is also why things, as, uh, uh, things like uh, Uber as a, a ride-sharing uh, uh, prospect that was uh, mentioned uh, to me earlier this morning and I've heard from other Amish people, is not really, that's not necessarily uh, uh, a problem. They, they don't view that as something that that, um, that would be a, that they're inconsistent if they're if they're using uh, if they're using Uber. The issue for them is control, individual autonomy, and uh, and and, and, and uh, individual independence. Finally, uh, Amish assumptions about uh, technology are revealed in the way they deploy technology across the social landscape. I think it's the case that for many of the rest of us, we think about technology if something is. Uh, something's going to be used, and it's going to be used anywhere and everywhere. It's not going to be used, it's going to be used nowhere. Um, Amish people are not only thinking about whether, whether to use, or to own, or just to access technology, but even things that are used or accessed, are used or accessed in different places at different times, or not used. Amish schools are the most technologically restricted realms. Uh, a clock, a heating stove, a hand pump, or water, are generally all the technology that you find schools. Um, schools tend to isolate children from technology and convey the message 
that techn technology is not all that important. Homes are less restrictive than schools, but are still the way of most of um, the consumer technologies that many of us of us would take for granted. Since the home is the center um, of the place where children are raised, and it's also the meeting place for churches, it's also where uh, where weddings and funerals uh, take place. Now, the further one moves away from the home, out into the barn, into a shop, or a distant construction site, the looser the restrictions on technology becomes. So, a church that might prohibit woodworker a woodworker from using a power tool in his home-based shop might allow that same uh, contractor to use a wide array of equipment when he is uh, on alien turf, so to speak, working for uh, an outside. The center of um, discussing what kinds of uh, technology um, might be used and how is the local Amish church district, similar to what Protestants would call a congregation or Catholics uh, a parish. For the Amish, this is a group of 16 to 20 households. And in a formal sense, each of these church districts takes up these sorts of questions twice a year, prior to their twice a year um, communion service. Members at that point of members meeting will review their agreed upon uh, parameters for owning, using, and deploying technology. That's in the formal sense. In the in actual practice, the process of discerning technology in Amish churches is a lot less formal. It involves informal discussion, sensitivity to tradition, an eye to the opinions of neighboring Amish churches, a good dose of everyday practicality. Uh, the burden of proof is always on change, but it's not assumed that there will never be any change. There's often a good deal of experimentation uh, for a period of months, maybe years, um, that might result in gradual acceptance of something. Or situations in which uh, individuals who are uh, pushing the boundaries may be called upon to um, retract their practices or, as the Amish would say, put away whatever it is that they were, they were doing. Um, uh, economic um, concerns are uh, economic concerns are implicit in these uh, discussions and issues, even if Amish um, business owners aren't driven to maximize efficiency the way many of the rest of us might be. They're not unconcerned with such matters. And in recent years, a growing number of Amish business people uh, argued that um, cell phones were becoming essential to their livelihood. And this was especially true uh, after the 2000, during and after the 2009 recession, when competition for customer service uh, shot up. These Amish business people also contended that cell phones were simply a variation of a long-standing Amish tradition in most places of businesses having landlines, not in the home, but in the place of business or near the place of business. Um, telephone, uh, telephone technology, as you can say, going back in time, has, has sort of a checkered um, history with the Amish here in Lancaster. In the early 1900s, um, <laughs> Amish households in Lancaster County installed uh, phones in their homes, but then collectively, dis uh, collectively disconnected their service in 1910, after a series of church conflicts arose that were rooted in gossip spread over the lines. Telephones had decontextualized communication. They had shut out the verbal cues that uh, come with uh, body language with dress, um, with silence, and other things that come through a high context, face-to-face -face conversation. Still, it seemed obvious to everyone that uh, telephone access could be useful in some cases, and so families joined after 1910, joined together in putting up community phone booths that were shared by several households. And in time, many business people moved those, um, those phones closer to their shops, um, although often they still live with some limitations. Again, it's varied from church district to church district and place to place. But as recently as um, last month, when I looked at a new Amish business directory, um, I saw a sizable Amish business uh, as part of its advertisement said, um, quote, best time to have a phone number, and then said best time to call 6.30 to 7 a.m., um, which means that the owner will be standing by the uh, phone booth during that half hour. Otherwise, you will get an answering service. Um, this is the kind of limitation that most businesses of the size of this business um, would not ever even imagine uh, doing. But it's the kind of limitation that, uh, that this business is living with. And, and is, uh, as far as I can tell, uh, driving financially nonetheless. 
So this is the, the background context to the boost, uh, well, first in the 1990s, and then especially after the recent recession, in which Amish building contractors, in going back to the 90s, began uh, hoarding the cell phones, constructing new homes in um, developments that didn't even have, uh, that didn't yet have uh, landline utilities in place. Carpenters uh, turned to cell phones, um, which were emerging as economically practical. One Amish man I talked to I explained it this way, um, uh, explained that this gradual pattern of acceptance with a metaphor from the world of software. Uh, he said, uh, landline phones under certain circumstances had been okay, quote, so cell phones kind of became okay 2.0, unquote. And he said, I think, I, I think you know what I mean by that. <laughs> and cell phones remained simply mobile versions of traditional telephones. I believe, looking back, that they likely would have um, gradually, uh, gained, gradually gained greater and greater acceptance across the Amish world. What happened, however, and, and they did in some places, but there was a, a bit of a, a, a hiccup after uh, um, in, in uh, about a decade ago, because what happened was that cell phones moved into new technological territory with texting and camera capabilities, and especially after 2007, with the first economically uh, reasonable, fast, and reliable so smartphones, um, some people had them before 2007, but 2007 is when they uh, really became affordable for, for most small business people. The internet connection um, changed the nature of the debate in many Amish communities. So there had been, since the 90s, some uh, rumblings of dissent from those who saw cell phones as breaking down the traditional home-work distinction uh, because mobile devices could easily be brought in. But now, with the internet, rather than making cell phones just a more efficient technology, they were for the Amish a new technology, and that sparked a new sort of discussion. The internet was an established taboo because of its association with television and movies and video games, and now it seemed to have found the back door into phones. Cell phone supporters, on the other hand, argued that the devices were just business tools. They were used away from home, shared by several subcontractors on a single site. These were all features or variations of the traditional parameters of landlines, as supporters said. Critics, including some business people, like the entrepreneur I mentioned at the beginning, insisted that these characteristics were surface similarities and that internet, internet connectivity qualitatively changed the discussion. One uh, window into the current conversation uh, comes from a 2014 presentation to a group of Amish teens and young adults east of New Holland. And I'm going to give some, uh, some, some excerpts here uh, to give you a flavor, uh, some of it summarizing my own words and some, some, some direct quotations, to give you a flavor of um, one, so it's just one, one sampling, but one sampling of a, um, um, a presentation followed by a discussion um, a few years ago east of New Holland, in which parents who knew that many of their young people had cell phones, in fact, some of the parents did as well, asked an Amish businessman who had once had a cell phone for work, but then uh, got rid of it, to speak to, um, to, speak to uh, the, uh, their, their children about um, the uh, problems uh, with uh, internet connected phones. So although he began by saying uh, that I'm not here to take sides, um, he listed a host of phone and plane problems ranging from the immoral chatter of social media, as he called it, to easy, and easily accessible pornography. Conceding that there is nothing on the internet that has not been with humans for thousands of years, he asserted that the difference here today is that the cell phone and the internet brings us all together in one little device. You hold the whole world in your hand. Doubling down on what he saw as the central problem raised by the phones, uh, he identified the fundamentally private and isolating nature of the the internet is often thought of as something that connects people. Uh, in his presentation, the internet is something that isolates uh, people through uh, anonymity and uh, private decisions um, and, uh, and, and, and private access. He, um, so he, he talked about that. And then he said, it would be easy now to say, just keep the Lord in your heart and make good choices and all will be well. But the issue goes deeper. Because, he explained, individuals cannot consistently make good choices on their own, especially when the internet is so private and so anonymous. And that's why, he concluded, smartphones are so problematic. You might get rid of this. 
The technology dismantles the collective discernment by privatizing choices and rendering them invisible. One of the marks of America is its individualism. Uh, you know, yet the Bible was written to, communi to communities about communities. It was meant to be lived and expressed as a people, not a person. According to scripture, each individual has something vital for the whole community. It is one of the oldest schemes of the devil to isolate people because he knows that isolation will cut them off from the wisdom of multiple perspectives. Even the Amish understandings of high context community, the World Wide Web was not the place of connection, but a source of isolation. Um, so what did, uh, again, a variety of responses or uh, ways in which um, ways in which Amish people have, have um, um, responded to smartphones. So some don't have them, some have them, some use them in certain ways, but not in others. But that particular group that I refer to, uh, East of New Holland, several of the church districts there, have uh, used a new technology to solve this other technological phenomenon. And I suppose counselors of irony would find that uh, interesting, that they're now using a new form of technology um, to, to solve this other technological Discerning cell phone use is, is by no means uh, resolved in most other circles. Um, and actually, I don't know that resolved is, you know, that anything in terms of technology and change is ever uh, resolved. But um, over the course of the last year, in my visits in various places in Illinois, Indiana, and Pennsylvania, I've been with um, uh, Amish churches that have made similar decisions to, to several of these districts that are east of New and they have decided to accept wireless phone technology, commonly known as VoIP or Voice Over Internet Protocol. In one case, this is an advertisement. This is sold by a local, um, provided by a local Amish business. And in these cases, uh, the individuals who had cell phones, and there were some in each place, got rid of them, and instead obtained a, a VoIP box offered by companies such as Verizon and AT&T, which carries phone calls over the airways to an otherwise now it seems like a very old-fashioned wireless phone. Um, like a cell phone, these home wireless um, phones are mobile. That is, the black box receivers can be hooked up to a battery instead of plugged into a wall, and Amish entrepreneurs have already built uh, boxes that you can buy that uh, fit the receiver and the battery. It's a very nice uh, package that you can carry around with the phone. So you can take it to your work site, um, or you can move it from desk to desk uh, in a business. So it can be uh, transferred, so it is mobile. Um, uh, but unlike um, uh, cell phones, uh, VoIP does not allow uh, texting, video, uh, there's no data plans, there's no uh, internet uh, possible. So the, the VoIP option illustrates one outcome of Amish um, technological discernment. It's a, in this case, a collective decision that required some people to give up their cell phones while Conceding on the other side, you might say that conventional phones were going to be moving or could move into the home, although the weight boxes are larger um, and cordless phones are um, less easily hidden. Um, uh, they're not as secret, they're less private than, uh, than uh, cell phones. Significantly, this uh, outcome, which is not the only outcome again, but this particular outcome separated cultural conversations about telephones from conversations about the internet and insisted that each technology needed to be weighed on its own merits. It was not assumed that choosing one technology uh, implicates you in choosing everything. The fact that a cellular technology, in this case, point, offered a way forward doesn't bother the Amish either, since their goal is not technological purity, but rather a particular expression of their community. And very briefly, I might uh, mention that there's a, we tell a similar sort of story that has gelled in some Amish communities and some parts of the Lancaster settlement um, with regard to computers and businesses, uh, where again opposition to the internet remains strong, but the practical desire for business computing, word processing, spreadsheets, tax preparation, payroll, and the like, uh, is also important. And that there is uh, one Amish owned IT company that builds computers with an Intel i7 processor, one terabyte hard drive, and so on. The specs are on this. Uh, <laughs> Um, that has a DSL line for email, but no internet, no audio, no video capability. Amish clients run the computers with batteries uh, or on public utility electricity if they're leasing in a, a non Amish uh, facility. And in some uh, districts in the Lancaster settlement, um, this, uh, this arrangement can be um, connected to the internet with a third party accountability system or uh, strict filtering software 
that limits the internet's use to unscheduling shipping or checking 